function basically of tolerance or you can say that they're both uh, a function of each other if you take the reciprocal of 1.584 you will get 0 0.631 so that means one the number one divided by 1.584 will give you tolerance uh, give you the tolerance value so they're redundant information. Uh, f people say variance inflation factors uh, of four, you start to be worried, uh, and definitely over 10, you're really concerned. Uh, okay, maybe. Uh, I, I have a hard time interpreting. There's nothing intuitive about a variance inflation factor, in my opinion, uh, in comparison to the tolerance value. And tolerance is basically the unique variance, the independent variance associated with the deep, the independent variable, independent of the other uh, variables. So if you regress, if we were to do a multiple regression of the first independent variable, DJW, if we did a, if we use the other four independent variables to predict DJW, we would get uh, a multiple R of uh, 1 minus 0.63. So uh, 60, that means that 63% of the variance in DJW is unique. So that's a lot. A lot of the variance in DJW is not being predicted by the other independent variables. Uh, 89%, 0.89 for this independent variable here, 89% of its variance is not being accounted for by the other independent variables. And multicollinearity becomes a problem, arguably, I think people start to get worried when your tolerance values are 0 0.20 or less. So once you start getting, once there's less than 20% of the variance associated with an independent variable that is not unique, you start to get concerned about the standard errors in your analysis and, and so there you can't be confident about your statistical significance values. Alright? So, uh, Multicollinearity is um, not a problem in this analysis because the tolerance levels are all greater than 0 0.20. All of them have uh, more than 20% of their variance is not dependent or uh, collinear with the other independent variables. So we don't have a problem with that here. I think that's probably uh, the last. This is where SPSS uh, tells you about how it excluded variables and why it didn't include it in the model. Not uh, terribly informative. Then we get even more collinearity di diagnostics. If you want to look at that in more in greater detail, I t I tend not to very much. Um, the tolerance values usually enough. Uh, I'm not as concerned about collinearity as some other people. Um, so even if you're pushing pretty high levels, it doesn't bother me too much. Uh, but there is a point at which, like definitely 90, if you only have a tolerance level of 0.10, you get a problem. Usually, what happens is that somebody includes a variable that shouldn't have been in the analysis because it's a it's a function of another variable and then you get like a huge uh, multicollinearity problem because it's not a real variable it's something you shouldn't have even included in your analysis here we got the residual statistics not terribly informative we get the histogram of the residuals uh, which people look at and ideally you want to see a nice normal distribution these are the residuals associated with AFI so what the residuals are what's left over after being predicted by the independent variables as a multiple regression equation. And that's fairly normal, nothing too unusual there. Here we've got the normal PP plot of regression standardized residual. You want to see that these values are all hugging the uh, line of um, least squares, so the line of greatest fit. But there's no statistical way of you're just looking at it and thinking, oh, okay. Um, here, though, we've got probably something that's more informative, which is that plot that I created, regression standardized predicted value on the x-axis and the regression standardized residual on the y-axis. And what you want to see, basically, is random data here. You want to see a bird's nest. But what you can see is that it looks like it's tighter here. There's, and this is what you see typically when there is a problem with heteroscedasticity. This is what this plot is used for, is to help us identify heteroscedasticity. And if heteroscedasticity is present in our present 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 in our data, then we don't have confidence in our standard errors associated with our beta weights. And I, this is starting. This is concerning. I find that the data are lumped here quite closely and then it starts to get wider, it starts to fan out and this is suggestive of multicollinearity in my opinion. 
what you normally see is something like a real big circle of data points here. Uh, so I'm just going to I'm not going to examine that further. I'm going to create a different video to actually test statistically significantly using a couple of techniques to evaluate um, heteroscedasticity in data. And I'm also going to create a video where we can estimate uh, unbiased or corrected standard errors associated with this very multiple regression analysis so that I can be confident that what I'm estimating is in fact statistically significant. I'm going to end the video there. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for listening and watching.